In this video, I'm going to be breaking down what I do in a Madden game, why I do it, and what you can learn both from the things that I do right and the things that I do wrong. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means a lot to me that you would watch my YouTube videos. And for those of you that don't know who I am or kind of what I'm doing here on YouTube, my name is Cody, and basically what my channel is all about is it's all about becoming a better Madden 21 player. And so if you're looking to become a better player alongside of me, I'm trying to get better every single day, and you can learn from some of the things that I do right, some of the things I do wrong. We also break down pro players here on the channel um, as well. So make sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen okay guys so on defense i am running my nickel 335 uh, defensive ebook which you can pick up in the description of this video on offense i am running the bunch tight end offense that i just released um, as well and if you want to get that ebook that is also in the description for you now uh, really quick uh, what we're going to do is kind of break down again kind of our our system right uh, what we're thinking, what we're doing, and why we're doing it, more importantly. So, uh, starting off, first drive, what I like to do on the first drive is I just like to kind of play um, a basic defense. I don't like to try to do anything too complicated. And really, my goal on defense, in a nutshell, is to basically try to, on the first drive, uh, just get a little bit of an understanding of kind of what they want to do, right? What do they want to do? What are their go-to routes? What are their go-to um, man beaters, zone beaters? Those are some of the things that I want to try to get a pulse on um, within the first within the first drive. So um, it looks like he's going to be running some single back wing here. And whenever I face under center, I almost always go to a five-man rush. I find it to be very, very difficult for under center offenses to be able to beat this defense out of the nickel 335 wide because I can do that right there, as you see. And we break down how to do that to a T in our ebook. But basically, if I see play action or if I see passing from under center, I will blitz the living daylights out of you and force you to at least block people. And then what I'll be able to do off of that is from the same exact look, play some man coverage, play some zone coverage, all of those types of things. And that's why I believe the 335 wide is the best defense in the entire game. Now, I'm actually working a little bit behind the scenes um, on a new defense uh, out of this cover, um, basically some match defenses and some different principles out of the big nickel, um, but you can also use a lot of those same principles out of, uh, out of the... Uh, the nickel normal defense. So, uh, anyways, all that to say, here we go. He's going to come out in some U trips uh, here on this situation, uh, situational down here. So I just got to watch probably the crossing round. He does have a tight end apprentice, and he is going to go ahead and complete that there. Really good job by him, Marcus Mariota at quarterback for him, which is an interesting decision. Um, Another thing I like to do is I like to also go to some of these 4-6 packages like the speed package. I find the speed package to be super underrated, uh, and then I'll basically just sub in my you know my best pass rushers right there. But anywho, it uh, looks like he's going to stay in U-trips here, and he's actually going to come out and run this for a short yardage. So what I like to do in short yardage situations, I will almost always run some type of cover zero blitz. Um, you know, I just find you put press, pressure bus pipes. He does hit me with the five six trap. That's one of the best runs uh, in the entire game. So good read by him and good play call. Now on defense, like I said, I like to go through and just set stuff up just in case I want to go to it. So uh, like I'll, I'll set up my three four bear package. Uh, I'll set up all kinds of different defenses uh, just to be able to have them in a situation you know where I might need them. So uh, I got Ty Summers here. I got Oric Oric or Orin Burks, um, who is also a really good linebacker on the Packers. Obviously, we're learning a little bit more. Uh, regs is probably my favorite game mode to play, uh, and the reason why is because it's just it's it's really simple. Um, you know, it, it really is just a simple game mode, and that's why I like it so much. You know, there's not all these cr crazy different theme teams and things you have to watch out for. Um, you know, I just I personally feel like it's just more about your scheme. You know, does your scheme work well or does it not work well? So, uh, anyways, right here I'm kind of okay. Uh, with giving up this uh, little 5-6 trap that he's been running a lot of here. Uh, we're going to sit in this cover 4 defense, kind of force him to pass. You know, honestly, if he wants to run the ball every play, that's fine with me. Um, we'll clamp that down in the red zone. Because, again, my goal is my goal is very simple, right? All I'm trying to do on defense, this is all I'm trying to do. I'm simply trying to 
force my opponent to have to drive up and down the field. That's it. Like, if I can do one thing, it's that. Uh, right here. And he actually got me on a little bit of a route swap on that. Good read by him. That was my user responsibility. So good read by him there. And I'm going to have to move the TV a little closer so I can see a little bit better. Also, one of my secret tips, <laughs> and, and I, um, as you go throughout a Madden game, you know, there's a lot of emotions that you have to manage. There's a lot of challenges that will come with any Madden game that you play. One of my little secret tips that I use pretty much every game is I have just a simple hand towel right next to me. And the reason why I do that is because obviously your hands will typically, you know, get sweaty or whatever throughout the course of a game, especially the more intense the game. But also what it does is it forces me to press pause. And I think it is so important in the course of a Madden game, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the um, play to play that you forget to press pause and seriously process through what is going on. You know, you have to be able to press pause. That's why, you know, there's the pre-snap menu here where you can basically wait for 15 seconds every single time and kind of think, right? It gives you that 10 to 15 seconds just to press pause and just kind of think through what is his strategy? What is he trying to do? Because on defense, ultimately, we have two two-fold goals. Number one, um, our, our first and primary goal is to hold our opponent to a field goal on every drive, right? Number two, and even more importantly, um, is we are simply trying to um, basically force our opponent to play left-handed. If we can force our opponent to play left-handed, that truly is, I believe, the key uh, to defense. And so we've got to figure out what is his go-to passing play. And what are those routes? And this pause, this little 15-second window where I basically put the controller down, I grab you know, my side towel here, make sure my hands are dry, and then I kind of think through, okay, second and 10, he's on the right hash mark, he's got you know, 41 seconds, we, he just ran this route combo, you know, now what can we do? Um, so like right here, we're gonna mix in, we're gonna mix in some man-to-man -man coverage on him. And just to see how he handles it, just to see how he handles it, we're going to mix this in here. And goes back to that 5-6 trap. And he's actually, I have not seen a lot of people have this much success with this run. Um, so we're going to have to kind of take note of that. I mean, he's called it about three to six times on this drive. I think he's probably called it four, three to four times on this drive so far. So I'm going to have to prepare for that a little bit more. Um, I might have to try a different stunt. With my line, with my lineman, you know, I might have to go maybe to some different defenses and strategies, but you know, I have to kind of prepare for that. When you slow down and you pause, it allows you to be so much more effective as a Madden player. When you, in my opinion, on defense. Now on offense, I would say, you know, you really want to. I think for me anyway, I like to run a very fast-paced offense, very, you know, just no huddle, no huddle, no huddle, and go, 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 go. On defense, it's almost the opposite. I want to be slow on defense. I want to be methodical. I want to be very intentional with my coverages and understanding what are the routes he's trying to hit, right? What are the routes he's trying to hit? If I could understand that, that's why I don't even start most games with Mabel coverage anymore. I start with just basic coverages. So anyway, um, that's a little bit about that. Now what I want to sh talk through here is this little single back wing pair, which is a different defense, but you know that he's probably going to go right there. It does hit his drag route. Good read by him. Good read by him over there. And so this is a pretty good drive that he's fun he's figuring out here. So uh, in, this in this next situation, what you're going to see I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, kind of set up my 4-4. And the reason why is because 4-4, four four, um, I've been using it a lot in the red zone. Um, and it's been working really, really, really well. Um, what I basically do is I put uh, Darnell Savage as my user, so I'll put him at the safety position, and then I'll put Adrian Amos on the opposite side right here. And then the only adjustment, and I'm not going to come out in it this play, but I might come out in it next play, the only thing that I really do is I change my zone drops a little bit. Okay, That's the biggest thing that I do on this defense. And that was a bad gap shoot by me. Good run by him. 
And it looks like he's content with slowing the pace of the game down. Now, he's running the New England Patriots playbook, which the New England Patriots playbook is, in my opinion, the best offensive playbook in the game. It may not be the best. I think it's definitely up there as a top um, a top level scheme. So I actually wrote an ebook on that as well. So if you want to get that link, that is in the description as well in this video. But anyways, uh, cover three. And... Uh, here we go. Now, now what we're going to try to do here is drop drop a Mabel coverage just like this right here uh, and really just try to deter. This is really the D. And as you can see here, it did a good job of stopping stretch. I just need to get through that gap. I didn't shoot the gap the greatest there. Um, and remember, I did put my, um, my cloud flats or my flat zones are on 10 yards. So what I like to do is basically... Uh, flat both of these guys and then I'll take the weak side whoever's the weak side guy and he'll go into the deep middle zone and then basically we're just gonna take that away take that away and then he ends up scrambling on us what we probably should do is we probably should spy that linebacker instead of dropping him into a hook zone so good job by him good drive very methodical um, you know, one of the things that we probably should have, and he ran the ball a good amount, so we've got to be ready for that on the next drive. But one of the things that we need to be a little bit more mindful of whenever we get back on defense is when he, when when the play breaks down, he likes to run with Mariota. That's the whole purpose of him having him in the game. So we need to put spies on the field. Um, but a couple big takeaways. Number one, in a clutch situation, he will run the ball. 100% will run the ball. And by personality, I hate playing people like that. Um, it just drives me crazy because I feel like the run game is very flukish. Like sometimes the run pops, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, but that's just my personal opinion on that. So, you know, that's a little bit of what I've got to, to kind of watch out for. So, anyways, jumping into the offense a little bit here. So, I've been running bunch tight end for about two, maybe three weeks now. And this offense is insanely effective. It's very hard to stop. Um, in my opinion, it is 100% the best offense for regs because you don't need Hot Rap Master for it. Hot Rap Master helps, but it, it, it at the end of the day, you don't have to have it. Um, it's a very good offense without it. Um, obviously, everybody knows about PA boot over. Now, I personally... Uh, actually made a mistake right there. I don't like to go. I don't like to huddle up when I run this. I just want to go like super, super fast. Uh, and the reason why is just because I think it puts a lot of pressure uh, on the defense. So, anyways, here he's showing some heavy pressure out of three, four odds. So if he's not have, yep. If he's not going to put that that corner out there in a hard flat, we're going to throw that route all day long. And now we're going to move. We're going to move really quickly here. And you're going to see we're going to kind of do the same thing on the right side of the field. Uh, we're going to just basically run a, a simple flood concept over here now. And he's going to blitz his entire team. And Aaron Jones is going to be a nice little... Uh, Aaron Jones is such a good running back for regs. Um, he has the backfield. I think he has backfield... Uh, I don't know what it's called. I, I can't remember the ability, but it basically means like he's a matchup nightmare or whatever. Where like he, he will do a really good job at getting open for you is, is basically what we're talking about here. So anyways... We'll see what he does here, but he's sticking with this 3-4 odd type of defense here, so um, we might have to change. Let's see here, and that whip route is so good. It's one of my favorite routes in the game, um, just because of how simple it is and how good it works against man and zone this year, um, especially from bunch tight end. It's really, really good. So right here, we should have a touchdown. He does a good job of using it, and we get that tight end delay fade. It's probably one of the most underrated routes in the entire game it's so hard to defend another little quick tip for when you're running this offense is you can like when you're down in the red zone maybe you don't want to use a delay fade right you want to use this little uh delay crossing route i find i have a lot of success with that route right there um just based off of where the what people are going to do to stop the you know the counter to the delay fade is really to put a, a hook zone over there on the on the tight end well when you put him on a crossing route um, he kind of oh, basically gets wide open against that defense uh, right here. That's actually good defense by him. Um, Aaron Jones did a really good job for me right there of just getting that initial truck animation. And let's see here. We're in a situation. We're in a little bit of a situation here where he's probably going to blitz us, uh, I would bet. 
So we're going to go to tight end corner. This is my favorite, probably my favorite red zone play, um, just because of that, that corner route. And it didn't get open, unfortunately. And we're just going to go ahead and get out of bounds. And there's, okay, so this is a little bit of a game management tip right there. I shouldn't have done what I just did. Um, but it's going to be, it should be okay just with the way he plays offense. I should have taken a sack, um, but I didn't. I went out of bounds. But anyways, uh, the point is why would you take three there versus go for it on fourth? Well, we're getting the football coming out of halftime. Um, so because there's only 10 seconds, what I was trying to do there is I was going to say, okay, let's just see what's open. And I didn't have a great route combo on the field. His hook zone, he I'm surprised he left his hook zones there. Uh, I should have went with maybe a, an outside curl flat concept. But the, the bottom line is now we're in a situation where we're second and – or whatever, uh, you know, 25 seconds left. And this is my favorite uh, zone drops to do for this situation right here. We'll, we'll basically just put essentially everybody back. And I personally think this 3-4 odd, or not 3-4 odd, but um, um, nickel 3-3-5 cover 4 drop will be just fine. We're just going to basically take that away, come down, make a tackle. And he gets out of bounds. So he's four seconds, right? Um, four seconds is not um, – like he can't throw a quick route and get out of bounds, right? He can't do that with this with the time he has left on the clock. So we should be good here. We just have to watch for anything deep out of this cover four. And just see PA cross. Just mainly he's, he's shown over and over again that he's going to go guard. He's going to basically try to throw it to the tight end every time. So here he gets out of bounds. We need a fumble. Really wanted a fumble right there to try to maybe have a play, but we closed off the second half okay, or first half okay. So now what we have to do is we get ball coming out of half. We need to go down and we need to score a touchdown. This is a big drive for me. Um, it really is important. And of course, he's going to do this little stupid thing. And unfortunately, and this is just a cardinal sin, and I make this mistake. I cannot tell you how many times I make this mistake. It's a habit you have to break. Um, when you come out of half, I'm telling you about 50% of the games I've played online, people will come out an onside kick. When you come out and you select your kickoff play before they select their kickoff play, it's just like selecting your play on defense before they select their play on offense. It's stupid, and um, and I should not have done that. So, anyways, I'm going to go to my whip route again. He's doing – I don't know what he's doing on that right side, but I think he's running some cover two. Uh, we're going to try to catch him here with PA boot over and just get out of the pocket here with Rodgers. And I think we've got a touchdown. We've got a major, major route right there. Devontae puts us in scoring range here. And now when I run the run-heavy playbook, I actually really, really like to come down into this formation right here out of an out of a audible down. Um, it's got a good run. It's obviously got the stretch run play. Uh, he's actually running an interesting defense where he is kind of pinching his linebacker. So we'll see what he does here to it. Um, and he is going to leave himself fairly vulnerable here. If I can kind of maybe get sticky with him and I couldn't, I should have double juked him. I didn't. Um, so good defense by him. I'm going to go to the play that I should have went to on the, on the last drive. Um, this is inside switch with a option route and a curl route. This curl route should get open here. And, of course, it doesn't. And Rogers somehow magic. I don't know what just happened, but that's okay. So he's running Tampa 2. Uh, I need to get that curl route. I think what I need to do here is I'm going to run that same play. The only difference here is I'm going to get Tavon Austin all the way out to the numbers. Um, instead of partially out there. So get him all the way out there. And then I should also, that's what we're looking for right there. And, of course, he gets stuffed. for. Th so I only need, I need three yards. And he's running, I think he's literally going to run just Tampa 2 stock. So we're going to go to this setup right here. Um, we have the curl flat concept over here on this side. If he run commits, we have a quick out route right there. Oh, crap, I messed up. Um... That is scantily supposed to run the flat. There. All right, so we'll see what pressure he brings at us. And he's going to be able to get the sack. I had the curl route wide open, of course. So 
that's just really bad execution. That's really bad execution. He did exactly what he needed to do on the defensive side of the ball, and I did exactly what I did not need on the offensive side of the ball. And now we're going to have to stop him. And I can already bet you about $1,000 he's probably going to come out and literally run the ball every single play. Um, so we're going to basically go through and send some pressure at him here. Uh, essentially, his offense is throw to Darren Waller or run the ball. So that's what he's shown me. And so there's 5-6 trap, and right out of the gate, he's already running. I told you guys I needed to learn how to stop that run. I have obviously not done that. And so he's going to get a nice 15-yard scamper there with um, with Jacobs. I believe that that 5-6 trap is one of the flukiest runs in the entire game. It just randomly will work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, right here, we're going to really pinch in here and try to just take this run away, forcing him to pass the ball. Um, and there's the pressure. That's 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 huge. That's that's absolutely a huge sack. Uh, and we're gonna we're literally gonna do the same thing. Um, I just I just can't stand um, him running him being able to run the ball every play. So we're gonna try this little setup here. And he's gonna throw it up. And Jackson, I clicked onto him and hit triangle. He did not uh, respond to the ball, unfortunately. So now he's in a third and twenty. And this is where that cover four should work well for us. So, um, all right, and our adjustments are all over the place. There we go. There's a pick. And let's see if we can get seven here. Oh, dang it. Good D. Okay, so he's – okay, so we got the interception we needed. Um, that was tendency, right? I knew it was very likely that he was going to run a post route from that solo receiver. Um, he had done it uh, on the first drive, and he ended up getting a, a, a good play about that. So, again, that's a little bit about tendency. Now, what I think he's going to do, because he's had so much success with this cover two, uh, I think we're going to see cover two. So, hopefully, we can get this corner route in there uh, for a touchdown. Low ball it, and Devontae Adams completely glitches out, doesn't react to the ball, even though we clicked on to him. And that should have been a touchdown, but it was not. Um, now, again, this is another thing that I really, really want to stress. Tight end corner is a really, really important play because very much so, very few zones stop it. Um, and obviously we have the curl flat concept on the back side. That curl flat is a huge, huge concept that you have to, have to, um, I think you have to prioritize. If you're going to run this offense with any success, you're going to have to do that. Now, as you see here, he's showing pressure. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with his user when I snap this ball. He's going to jump to the bubble screen. We're just trying to – we're going to run right back to it. Um, and we're going to move quick. We're going to move quick, 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 quick. Now, right here, we got the wrong audible off, unfortunately. So we're going to have to basically uh, re-audible again. And – Again, this is just a matter of can Aaron Jones truck it in because his defense is not set up to stop this. Um, I wish I would have brought the halfback dive to the party right here. I'm going to go to the slash, um, you know, and I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get that one yard, and I'm trying to do it really really quick, and we're able to get in there for a touchdown. That's huge. That's a, that that you know again, three four odd is a good defense. It's not to me. It's not the best in the. I don't know. I mean, it just I just think that you can get some runs through that. So, anyways, we're able to get that, that little slash fake uh, run from the bunch, which that run is very hard to shoot. Uh, I find that run to be very difficult to shoot. Um, and so that's why I went with that right there. Now, defensively, we got to be feeling good. Uh, but we have to remember, again, in the first half, he took four and a half minutes to go down and score a touchdown. He's got that time right here so we've got to be on our best a game defense we have a very we very much so have some momentum but we have to again continue to be intentional about our defense so obviously he's shown that he doesn't like it when we bring our safeties down from a running perspective and so what you're going to probably see me do is you're going to see me do that almost every single time i'm going to start bringing the safeties down just because i want to deter uh any any um, plan he has to run the ball. Right here, I'm going to do a little bit of a different defensive strategy, um, basically pinching these guys down, uh, watching for like a power O. I can 100% see power O. And no, runs that, runs that, runs that. He's going to roll out. And Kevin King is going to make a huge play on that ball. 
That is a huge interception, and now we're in the driver's seat. Now the offense can really close this game out. Um, going to set a couple of different audibles here. I'm going to set the quick pitch. I'm going to set the slash, and then I'm also going to set the fake end around and the counter. So I've got all kinds of different runs that I can go to out of this out of this single back bunch and single back trio that are really really nice in combination with the um, the other runs that I have obviously. Now I can almost bet you money that if he does not blitz everyone here he is absolutely crazy. So I'm gonna go to a little motion out zig and we burn him over the top. Cover two defense does not stop that route right there at all. And as you can see, Devontae Adams, and now the bunch tight end, is really putting pressure on him a lot in this second half. And we're able to really do some good stuff. Now, really quickly, for those of you that don't know, I actually have a text message membership. It's completely free. That's why I have my phone number at the top left-hand corner of your screen. And we're going to be releasing um, a new scheme this week for you guys in that. And so basically by joining, it's completely free for you to join the text membership. And basically what you get is you get a new scheme every week. Um, I try to alternate between offense and defense, offense and defense, offense and defense. So sometimes it's two offenses to one defense. But anyways, this week we've got a new scheme coming for you out of, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to be working out of either the Raiders playbook, the Seattle playbook, or the run heavy playbook, um, but a couple plays in combination with one another. So really excited for that. Um, we're going to be sharing that with you this week. So if you haven't texted me yet, be sure to do that so that you can get that free video. Um, okay, so now we're in a really, really good spot. Uh, we're in a position now where we can really hopefully clamp down on some stuff, watch the post route. Um, obviously, he wants to roll out with Mariota. That's going to be his thing. We're going to take that tight end route, and I think that should have been an interception. He ends up getting a huge play. Um, so good, good read by him, good on him. Now, another coverage that I don't run a lot of, but I probably should, is cover six. Um, and I need to run this more, but basically when they have just a tight end over here, um, that's actually a good run right there. That's a, that's, one of, that's one of the toughest runs in the game to stop uh, in the red zone. Like right here, we're going to play a little three wreck, and we're just going to give him some user rush pressure just to kind of make him feel it, and he ends up, again, that's, you know, Mariota, that's what you get for using Mariota in my opinion. And as much as he's thrown over the middle, oh, I don't know how. I was just bad user by me. That should have been an interception. Now you got to think he's going to run the ball. Nope. Throws it right into my guy. He doesn't catch the ball. And this is where you go to your coaching adjustments and just make sure that you have ball in air to play ball. And we obviously do, so I don't know why he swatted it. So we're going with two yellows on the field. I love two yellows in this situation. Um, he's going to throw it. Scrambles out with Mariota. Takes 15 massive hits and doesn't fumble the ball. Right here, we really need a good user over the middle of the field. We're going to put a yellow right there to take away that quick route. That, that hook curl is going to take away those quick routes. We've got cover two on this left side. So there's nobody deep middle. That's our job. That's our 100% our job. And we freaking screw it up. And that's just on us, man. That is so on us. We have to make that play. That is absolutely terrible defense by me. Had everything taken away except my user consistently failed me on that drive. And he is now able to put himself in a position where he can get back into this game. Now, judging by his decision to go for an onside kick on the second half, I can tell you that my controller is now on the table. It is not. I am not picking it up until I see what he does. What does he come out in? Here it says, you know, kickoff. I'm literally going to wait because sometimes it says that and they come out in onside kick. So I'm going to wait all the way down to the one second mark. I think he thinks that his defense can get a stop. Offense has to close the game out here. Um, I had the perfect defense called, I think, two or three times there, and my user just failed me multiple times on that drive. So 
that's 100% my fault. Now, whenever you're in a situation like this, I recommend um, you're, you're in a, a critical situation. Unless you're in like a short yardage situation, I'm going to put it on conservative. I don't want to fumble, right? It's also going to help with quarterback strip sacks and things like that that might happen. Um, you're not going to fumble as much when you play on conservative. So we're going to go to that. And he hasn't really had an answer for this right here. So we're going to try to just get out of the pocket. And um, we could have tested his, his user there, but we're just going to take that easy read, delay fade. In my opinion here, obviously a field goal doesn't win the game. So we definitely have to be mindful of the clock. That does not mean, and I can be mindful of the clock without running the ball. Right, I can be mindful of the clock without running the ball. So everything is a sack. It, you know, if we need to take a sack, we will do that. Uh, right here, we're taking quick flat routes. We're doing little, you know, just instead of trying to run it and make break big plays, we're just staying in bounds. Keep that clock tick 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 tick. And uh, you know, even there, we're able to take a lot of clock. And you can do some fake motioning, right? You know, I can bring this guy over here, you know, maybe fake like I'm going to do that, and then basically bring him all the way back across the formation, right? And I get the same, you know, basic runoff that I would have got otherwise. And right there, that was a clutch read by Rodgers under pressure and throws an absolute strike to my tight end. That puts me in scoring position. So now... It comes down to he's blitzing his entire team almost every single time. That's that's going to be his strategy. So I love this quick out route right here. We're actually going to block a lot of people here. We're going to slide to the left side um, and try to kind of pick up some of this pressure. But look for Tavon Austin on this route. We're going to show him. He's probably going to jump to Devontae Adams. He did, and that's exactly what we wanted right there. And we're just going to go down get our first down, put ourselves in a good position. And this is really good offense right now. Uh, we're being super, super simple. Another thing that I really like to do let's, uh, is out of this tight end corner play, I'll block the running back or put him on an option route. In this case, I'm going to block him. So we have the tight end corner route, obviously. The next thing that I'm going to do is do that same motion with Devontae Adams, except this time um, he is going to simply be on a out route all the way out here. If there's no hard flat, um, I can throw that ball right there. And then, obviously, good defense by him. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, about how you can be conservative, right, and still pass the ball. I just stepped up. I simply stepped up into the pocket. Um, he called, I believe, cover two um, or some type of match coverage or something like that. And he did a really good job of having a yellow on that, on that guy. I could have probably forced it, but it wasn't worth it to me. So... Now we're in a situation right here. Uh, I actually really like this setup. We're going to run a hitch. And then we're going to basically run a flood concept with Valdez Scantling to the right here. But obviously, and I think he took a timeout. And if he runs that cover two again, and he doesn't, okay. So again, this is conservative. Conservative, conservative. I'm just stepping up. I'm not worried about, uh, and I think I even have a touchdown. I'm not even keeping my eyes downfield here. I'm just trying to get down. I could have hit left trigger and clicked the right joystick in as well there. And that's a good timeout call by him. But again, just some I, I you know, it's just it's it's conservative even though you're passing. And um, I think that not enough people talk about that. So anyway, right here, um, I really have one primary read that I'm looking at here, and I obviously have the delay fade if things break down. So just gonna try to see how he handles this. And we're going to do some pocket management here to give ourselves a little bit of extra time. And I have a touchdown, touchdown, touchdown in the back corner. Good read by me, being able to keep my... I had two touchdowns. I had one on that side. I had one on the other side. But, you know, he only puts two people in a critical down. We managed the pocket really well, not panicking, just managing, 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 managing. And then we hit a absolute laser. And that's going to close the game out. I mean, that's really, really um, a tough, tough, tough uh, situation for him. Now, the one thing that he, you know, again, has going for him is if he goes down and scores a field goal and then he onside kicks and gets it, that's kind of his, going to have to be his strategy. So I like to sky kick in this situation to try to, I, I don't like to squib kick ever. 
um, but I do like the sky kick here. Uh, I have given up some touchdowns with the sky kick, but uh, I think he, I don't know what happened with his controller, might have died or something, but anyways, that puts us in a good position. So now, what I like to do um, in these types of positions is I'm going to move these back to 30, move these back to 15, and move these back to 10, as you can see right here all the way across. And then essentially, you're going to see me sit in, um, sit in cover four, for the most part, um, I might shift into Tampa 2, um, and it does look like he's going to go ahead and quit out. But if you guys want to get the full offensive ebook, that link is in the description. If you want to get the full defensive ebook, that link is in the description as well. And if you haven't joined the text membership, be sure to text me. My number is 812 216 3644. Thanks for watching. The ebook links are in the description of this video, and we'll be streaming tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern.